Hi, Integrated Math One. Welcome back to boot camp. We're doing one more day of rational exponents again. A lot of this is going to be reviewed, though I think we might hit a few slightly newish things for you toward the end of this. So let's just jump in, shall we? So to get things started for today, let's talk about the quotient of two powers. If you're dividing two powers with the same base, um, the quotient of two powers with the same base is that base raised to the difference of the exponents. Now, last time we said if it was a product of two powers with the same base, we added the exponents. Now we're saying if we're dividing uh, two powers with the same base, we're gonna subtract the exponents. Now I should warn you, it's always, 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 always the upper exponent subtracted uh, by the lower exponent. So for example, in this case right here, I have six to the seventh power divided by six to the fourth power. They have the exact same base. They both have a base of six. So we can just subtract our exponents and it's always top exponent minus the bottom exponent. So seven minus four, which will of course give us three. And we have six to the third power. I think if you grab a calculator, you'll find that's 216. Not sure. You might want to double check me on that. But the point is we simplified our powers, right? Instead of having a different, uh, pardon me, a quotient of two different powers, I can just like combine them down, create one power. Makes things a little easier. So I would like you, and keep in mind, you may have to use some of our tricks from last time. So if you need to rewatch the last video to review a few things, totally cool. I get it. That's fine. But I would like you to work out these four problems. Go ahead, hit pause to work these out and then hit play when you're ready to check your work. You ready? You ready? So for A, I have three to the eighth power divided by three to the second power. They both have a base of three. So I'm just gonna do three to the eight minus two power, which of course gives me three to the sixth power. And again, at this point, you could totally grab a calculator and figure out what that is. I know it's a really big number, so I'm not gonna stress about it too much right now. If we come down here to B, I notice I have x to the fifth divided by x to the fifth. Now, some of you guys realize if you have something being divided by itself, you know the answer is gonna be one. But let me show you the exponents as to why that works, right? So I have the same base of x, so I can subtract my exponents. Oh, sorry, it went off to the side. We'll come back to B in a second. Sorry, it went out of order. I guess we're doing C first, my bad. So let's come over to C, um, A to the fifth, B to the ninth, First of all, I'm going to distribute that four power, that power of four right there. So I have a to the fourth over b to the fourth, and now I can subtract my exponents. For my a's, I'll do five minus four, and for my b's, I'll do nine minus four. Um, of course, you probably didn't write that. You probably did that in your head, and that's okay. Five minus four is one, nine minus four is five. So you probably did this middle step in your head. You probably didn't write that, and that's totally fine. I'm only writing it so that you can see what happened. And I don't really need to write a to the one power because a to the one power is just a. So I'm gonna just drop that one and I'm just gonna write it as a times b to the fifth. Now let's come back here. I got a little ahead of myself, it's fine. And we're gonna do, we have both of them have a base of x. So we'll subtract our fives, five minus five, which is of course zero. And we talked before about how anything to the zero power is Yes, it is. So again, you guys probably already knew x to the fifth, it's being divided by itself. Of course, it's going to be one, but the exponents show that that's true as well, right? If we subtract our exponents, we get an exponent of zero. Anything to the zero power is one. There was a lot happening here. Now, one of the things that I did do, one of the things that I did do is I did put a one, two, on that lovely exponent right there. Just just to make it a little easier to work with, I put a one on that exponent. So I have two to the three minus one power, three to the two minus four power, and five to the seven minus five power. So I'm just gonna subtract, subtract, subtract. They have the same basis, so I can subtract my exponents. So this becomes two squared, this becomes three to the negative two, and this becomes five squared. So at this point, I'm like, oh, negative exponents, right? We didn't like that. So I'm gonna put this into the denominator to make that power positive. So I still have two squared and five squared, but on the denominator, I'm gonna have three squared now. So that instead of a negative two power, I can have a positive two power. And if you wanted to go further, um, that's fine. You could leave it here and I'd probably be okay with that. But I just wanna go further because I could. Two squared is four, five squared is 25, and three squared is nine. Four times 25 is 100. And I find out that this is 100 over nine. Yay. 
If we come to the next page, a quotient raised to a positive power equals the quotient of the base raised to that power. This is just another everybody gets the power deal, right? Like if I have three fifths raised to the fourth power, instead of trying to be like, oh, three fifths of the fourth power, dude, keep it simple. I can just think of this as three to the fourth power over five to the fourth power. And then it's so much easier to work out. Now I should warn you, as we bring up the next example, I do have a few tricks, watch out. Um, go ahead, hit pause to work these out. Hit play when you're ready to check your work. So for this one, it wasn't so bad, right? Three to the fourth power, four to the third, pardon me, three to the third power, four to the third power. If you wanted to take it further, you could. Three to the third power, three times three times three is 27. Four to the third power, four times four times four is 64. And calculator is definitely helpful for that. Um, for B, everybody's going to get a power of 3, so this becomes 2 to the third power, x cubed to the third power, y to the third power, z to the third power, and I do want to clean up just a little bit. 2 to the third power is, of course, 8. 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Times 2 is 8. Um, be careful here. Uh, remember, x to the third power raised to the third power. Remember how we had to multiply our exponents when it's a power raised to a power. So this becomes 8x to the ninth power, and it's just over y cubed, z cubed. They don't really change. Sorry. This one was sneaky. Now, you could have written this as 2 to the negative third over 5 to the negative third, and then um, clean things up from there. But I'm going to show you a little trick. I'm going to show you a little trick. This is the coolest trick ever. If you have a negative exponent, remember the deal was that you had to flip your base? to make it positive, I'm just going to flip my base. Watch this. So instead of 2 fifths to the negative third power, I can flip my base, and that gives me a positive 3 power. Ooh, look at that. And now I don't have any more negative exponents, and I'm a little less stressed out. So 5 to the third power over 2 to the third power. If you want, you can grab a calculator and take it further. 5 times 5 is 25, times another 5 is 125. And of course, we already established 2 to the third power is 8, 2 times 2 times 2. Fabulous. So you may even want to hit pause here and maybe rethink how you did these. It's up to you. I personally was like, I don't like the negative exponents, so I flipped my bases. So instead of 3 over 4, I made that 4 over 3 to have a positive 1 power. And instead of 2x over 3y, I flipped it and I did 3y over 2x to give me a positive 2 power. And now I don't have negative exponents. I'm a little less stressed out. Um, 4 to the 1 power is 4, 3 to the 1 power is 3, so it's pretty straightforward. But now everybody in here gets a power of 2, so 3 squared, y squared, 2 squared, x squared. And then I had to clean up. 3 squared is 9, 2 squared is 4. Oh, 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 and check it out, check it out. Some things cancel out, right? 4 over 4, those guys are going to cancel out. Sweet. But these will cancel a bit too because 9 divided by 3 is, of course, just 3. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. We still have our y squared. We still have our x squared in the denominator. Yay. So it's starting to get a little more complex, only because we're throwing in more junk all at the same time. But I think you've got the idea. Now, we're about to hit a rule that might be new to a lot of you guys. So I hope you're watching carefully. I hope you're taking some good notes right here because this is the most, oh, it's so useful. I love this trick. I love this trick. I love this trick. And in fact, once you know this trick, you're going to use it in a lot of future math classes. The calculus students use this trick all the time. It's so good. It's so good. A number raised to a power of 1 over n is equal to the nth root of that number. Now, you're familiar with square roots, but you can also have cube roots and fourth roots and fifth roots. You can have roots of all kinds. And the deal is, instead of writing it as a root, you can write it as a fractional power, right? So instead of, a, uh, instead of the eighth root of x, I can write this as x to the 1 over a power. Right, so if you have a square root, we know that we're trying to, that's the, uh, a second root, so to speak. So I can rewrite the square root of x as x to the 1 half. You could rewrite this, the cube root of x as x to the 1 third. You can rewrite the fourth root of x as x to the 1 fourth. You get the idea, right? You get the idea? Such a cool trick. Such a cool trick. So I have a few problems that I want you to work out. 
Now that you know this trick, it might help, I'm giving you fractional exponents, it might help to rewrite these as roots, to rewrite these as radicals, and then you can grab your calculator to help you figure it out. So go ahead and hit pause, see if you can rewrite these and work these out, and then hit play when you're ready to check your work. You ready? So 125 to the one third power. So I rewrote that as the third root or the cube root of 125. So this means I'm looking for a number. This means I'm looking for a number, and I don't know what it is, that to the third power, and actually, I mean, okay, that's funky. I'm sorry, I don't have my pen today, so it's weird writing. I want to know what number raised to the third power would give me 125. That's what this is saying, right? If it's a cube root, square root means what number times itself would give you the number. Cube root means what number to the third power would give you the inside of that radical. So what number to the third power would give you 125? You might be able to work it out in your head, or of course, you can totally use a calculator. You can totally use a calculator. Um, and it turns out it's five, five to the third power. Five times five is 25, times another five is 125. And there you go. We can take this next level on part B. So 64 to the 1 6th power. Oh my gosh. So that's the sixth root of 64 plus that's a 1 half. So the square root of 25, I guess you could put a 2 there if you wanted to. Like you don't really like need to, but if you want it there, you could have it. So remember, this means we're looking for something to the sixth power. Sorry, that six went wonky. I don't have my pen here. That would equal 64. Um, this is something squared uh, to the second power that would equal 25. You probably already, you know what the square root of 25 is. It's five. Um, this one might take a little more. And again, your calculator can work that out for you if you know what you're doing on your calculator. Um, X to the sixth power equals 64. Well, two to the sixth power equals 64. Did you know that? Two times two is four times another two is eight. 8 times another 2 is 16 times another 2 is 32 times that 6 2 gives me 64. So sure enough, the 6 root of 64 is 2 and the square root of 25 is 5. 2 plus 5 is 7. Yay. Are you starting to wrap your head around this a little bit? I mean, that's really what it is, right? You got to like wrap your head around it a bit because I'm about to go next level on you. Are you ready? You ready? A number raised to the power of m over n is equal to the nth root of the number raised to the nth power. Did you get that? The idea is that the numerator, if you have a fractional exponent, the numerator is your power, right? However, you know, squared, third, whatever it is. The denominator of your exponent is going to be your root. So if I have something like b to the m over n power, then it's the nth root of b raised to the m power. So see how my numerator is just a normal everyday exponent, but my denominator is the root. That's what we were just playing with. And you can write it like this, or you can write it like this. Both ways of writing it are correct. I tend to like to work it out this way. Let me show you why. If I have eight to the two thirds power, I know I've got a power of two, and I know this is gonna be the third root of eight. Now, I know that the third root of eight or the cube root of eight is two, right? Two times two times two, that gives me eight. So I know the cube root of eight is two, and then I can square it and I get an answer of Ah, cool trick, cool trick. So the deal is that the numerator of our exponent is our power, the denominator is our root, that's our radical. So I have several of these for you to try. These are the last ones, these are the last ones. I've tortured you plenty already. So go ahead, hit pause to see if you can work your way through these, and then hit play when you're ready to check your work. So first, I'm just going to rewrite it. I know I have a power of 2, and I have a root of 3. So the third root, or the cube root of 216, I'll do that first, and then I'll square it. 
Um, if you have a calculator, you can pretty quickly do these if you know what you're doing on your calculator. Turns out the cube root of 216 is 6. Um, 6 times 6 is 36 times another 6 is 216. But we are going to square it. 6 squared is, of course, 36. Yay! Let's set up this one. Real similar, right? Only I have a power of 4 and a root of 5. So I have the fifth root of 32 raised to the fourth power. You might know this because we actually kind of blazed through this one earlier. The fifth root of 32 is 2, right? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That will give you 32. Um, 2 to the fourth power is 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. Right? 16. Again, your calculator can do that for you too. This one looks weird. So you know what? You know what I'm going to do? This one you may have been like, but there aren't any fractional powers. I'm going to tell you what. If you write these as fractional powers, you can simplify the exponents and make a much nicer problem. Are you ready? We said the power goes in the numerator, the root goes in the denominator. So I'm going to say that this is the x to the 9 thirds power, and I'll say that this is y to the 3 thirds power. So x is power of 9, the root is 3. For y, I have a power of 3, and my root is 3. And now I can just simplify, right? Because 9 thirds, 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 3 divided by 3 is 1. Oh, look how much nicer it made it. And in fact, you know what? I don't need to write y to the 1 power. I could just leave it as a y. And there we are. What? Look how cool that was. I like cleaned everything up like that. Oh my gosh. So how are you doing with this one? Well, first I distributed that 4. So x squared raised to the 4th power. Um, two, so x squared raised to the 4th power. 2 times 4 is 8. Y to the 1 half raised to the 4th power. Half times 4 is 4 halves. I know, I know. We'll worry about it in a second. And then we just did this, right? Y to the 3rd power. Or the cube root of Y to the 3rd power. So that's going to be Y to the 3 over 3 power. And now we can just clean up. Um, 4 divided by 2 is, of course, 2. And 3 divided by 3 is 1. Y squared times y to the 1 power, I can add those together. And so I have x to the 8th power, y to the 3rd power. Woo! That's a lot. But isn't this a cool trick? I love this trick. I love this trick. It takes something really scary and really simplifies it down. Even something like this that looked, oh my gosh, really horrific, simplified it right down for us. It's so nice. So as always, I hope you found this helpful. I hope you found this useful. If you got questions or concerns, come talk to me and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.